as I've already shown you in many of my videos, how the Swissies steer everything out of Pharaoh's neutral bays in the Alps. I will show you in this video how the Swissies steered some important and upsetting events of this year in 2024. So here you can see some Swiss t-shirts that reflect the state of their minds. It says half Swiss is better than none. So even a half Swiss is even better than the rest of humanity. Eh? This is the way they think. And here it says, he's all these Swiss crosses everywhere. Made in Switzerland, perfection guaranteed. So they think they are better than the rest of the world. And I was really like a subhuman over there, you know. And as they finance Hitler, you know, the, the whole idea of the subhuman races and everything, it all comes out of Switzerland. That's why they finance these Nazis and everything. And you can see that, you know, this is the reflection of their minds. So in May 2024, there was the Eurovision Song Contest that has shocked many people and upset, most of all, many religious people around the world. Like the performance of Bambi Thug from Ireland with the song Doomsday Blue being dressed up like the devil or a demon with the devil's horns with black eyes, being licked by another demon with horns, all together performing in a demonic pentagram, five-pointed star, and all together standing in a huge Swiss cross. So here it says, why the stage is a huge Swiss cross. Here you see the Swiss cross. Here you see the Bambi thug you know, on the Eurovi Eurovision Song Contest. This is a Swiss cross, you know. Uh, all these symbols, I mean, look at the symbols. They all have a meaning. It's nothing just for nothing, you know. It all has a sense and a purpose. Why a Swiss cross, you might ask? Well, because the whole thing is being steered and organized from out of Switzerland. And this, the Eurovision Song Contest, it was in Sweden, not even in Switzerland. And here in Switzerland, as you can see here, they do it a lot. You know, they put a Swiss cross on the, uh, on the floor, on the ground, just like here. It probably means something, this is Swiss property, or you're standing on Swiss ground, uh, the whole globe is Swiss ground, we own everything, uh, something like this, because it's quite strange, a Swiss cross in Sweden, eh? but I explain you why. The ESC, or Eurovision Song Contest, gets organized by the European Broadcasting Union in Geneva, right next to the United Nations, and CERN in a part of Geneva called Le Grand Saconex. So here you see it, the uh, European Broadcasting Union. Uh, here you see the, um, it operates the Eurovision. And here it says as well, the EBU, so the European Broadcasting Union, in cooperation with its members, produces programs and organizes events in which its members can participate, such as the Eurovision Song Contest. So the Eurovision Song Contest gets uh, organized from out of Switzerland. Here it says the headquarters are in Geneva, Switzerland where the Eurovision Song Contest gets organized from. And uh, here you can see their logo. I'll show you a better picture. 
here to the right, you see the logo of the Swiss EBU for European Broadcasting Union with a circle for the compass and three supposedly 90 degrees squares. So it says the concept of four and three for the Freemason square and compass. So here it says organized from out of Switzerland. This thing here is in Geneva, Switzerland. And this here, the same circle as this circle here, it was organized from out of Switzerland. I and mean, I just show it to you. They are in Geneva and they organized the Eurovision Song Contest. And all being performed on a big Swiss cross. Now, what do you want more? What proofs do you want more? Therefore, it is no surprise that Swissy won the European Song Contest of 2024 by a man in a pink women's skirt, a female soprano voice and singing that he broke the code and found his kingdom come. I guess he, she, or it, or whatever, meant the code of conduct. Well, I could analyze the words more, but I really don't want to dive too much in these sort of things, which can just be resumed in one word, which the censorship of the West won't allow me to express. So. Due to the dictatorial laws, I have to ex abstain to further express myself, just resuming it that he, she, or it, or whatever, certainly broke the dress code. And I suppose that religious people have a slight idea about what kingdom come, he, she, it, or whatever is referring to. So here you can see the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest 2024 was Switzerland. Yeah. It says in the sort of reversed speech here as well. And here I wrote it in pink for the occasion. Normally I don't use this color, but okay, for the occasion. Look, it fits nicely into the rest, you know. And here it says, uh, its name is Nemo. And if you look at the words, you know, um, an anagram, they are the same letters for omen, the omen. And it is a reversed speech. You know, if you start here, O-M-E-N, it says omen. You know, they're sort of into this reversed speech sort of thing. You know, you probably know what I mean. I, I can't really pronounce myself on it due to the censorship. But, um, you know, Nemo, reverse speech, omen, and an anagram. So, Nemo or Nemo is an anagram for omen using the same letters as in the movie the omen about the devil's kingdom come so it says the omen so in 1976 you know we had the omen now 48 years later in 2024 we got nemo which is reverse speech, you know, which fits in the same sort of thing as this here, apparently. And yeah, it says omen, you know, the omen. Is that a coincidence, Swissy? Can you tell me? Hey? And here, at the end of Swissy's Eurovision Song Contest performance, you can see the omen with the black sun radiating light which is nazi symbolism out of the nazi occultism and their belief of the black sun which again combines everything to swissyland
Nemo, the Black Sun, the Octagon, the Swiss finance of Hitler and Hamas, and the European Song Contest. So, is he the Black Sun? You see, it's a black sun and it's radiating a sort of strange sort of light, you know. There's nothing which is a coincidence in all this here. And here you see the Swiss performer. Here it says the Black Sun Omen. And again, Omen is the revert speech for Nemo, which is this one. And remember that all top Nazis were pink list killers, just as today's neo Nazi leaders are. And if you look carefully, the Swissies are always behind it, ready to literally sodomize humanity with Pharaoh's obelisk hiding under some pink skirt. And as you can see in the picture to the right, there are initiated people around us who adore the black sun, making so called occult artwork of it. And look how it's related to pyramids, pharaohs, Swaziland, and Nazis. Here it says the Grand Master, who is, of course, the Knights Templar Grand Master and Supreme Prince of the main principality called Swaziland. As I recently explained to you in my video, Principality of the Templar Princes. So here you can see the Swiss omen, the black sun. Here, the, here it says the black sun. Here it is. Here it says the Grand Master. You know, and we all see the pyramid. Eh? It's all related to pyramids. And here there are squares, you know, for the concept of four. And the sun here is a circle, you know, for the concept of three or the compass. So it does say square and compass, you know, it's all occult artwork and you know, occultism in the Eurovision thing, you know. And here to the left, you can see the Nazi black sun in Himmler's Wevelsburg castle. And to the right, how neo-Nazis love to show their black sun flags, so they don't feel so alone anymore, being part of something, some group, or even some black entity. So here, this is in a genuine picture of a, a genuine uh, black flag of Himmler in the Wevelsburg castle, of course, in a castle, you know, it's all out of the nobility, the whole Nazism, Pharaoh's nobility. And here you see a right winger with a black sun flag. And it says, the black sun of the Nazis. And by the way, I wonder why it says here, Switzerland because they do it more than once. If it would be only one time, I'd say, okay, that's a coincidence. There's somebody standing here in front of it. But it's not the only time. What does it mean, Switzerland? Anyway, I w here in the Swit part, I would uh, replace one letter with an H, but I'm not allowed to say that probably. They are allowed to do everything, but I can't even uh, allow myself some free speech, so I won't say that. So now I'll show you the other picture. What is Switzerland? Look, here they did it again. It says Switzerland. What does it mean? It's not only one time. They do it more times. You know, there's, there must be a reason, you know, if they repeat it. It must be important for them, you know. So it said Swiss, Swit, Swiss cross land. Is this a Swit? Swit, the Swiss cross, is that a Swit? In Swiss German, one could call the omen in a skirt der Kleidgenosse, from the word Kleid for a skirt in German or in Swiss German or a dress, and Genosse for comrade. 
because most Swissies call themselves Eidgenosse, which means the comrades of the oath, which is, of course, the Nazi Templar oath, as in reality, a Swiss Eidgenosse stands even more to the right than the far right. So, in Swiss German, Kleid, it means address, and Genosse means comrade. So, altogether, Kleid Genosse means the comrades of the dress, which is my parody on the Swiss right wing Eidgenosse, and it is a reality, as you can see here. So this is the official right-wing Swiss uh, name, Eid Genosse, with the Swiss coat of arms here. Eid, this here, Eid, it means the oath. It's almost the same, Eid, oath. And Genosse, it means the comrade. So this Eid Genosse, it means the comrades of the oath, the Templar oath. And here on this side, you see the, uh, the omen. And it says here, der Kleid Genosse. You know, it means the comrade of the skirt. So this is in singular, and this is in plural here. So the, the whole gang, you know, because all groups, you know, these are groups, these are groups, and all together, they are the comrades of the dress. You know, and they flow in into each other. You know. As um, Guillaume de Nogaret, he said so, that the, um, the Knights Templars, they are uh, Satanists and Sodomites. It's, it's one and the same thing, you know. And that's why we find it back in Nazism. In Switzerland, the far-right SVP party rules the country, and they call themselves Eidgenossa. So these are the sort of posters they put everywhere, you know. Here they see here you can see how the um, how they kick out Homie Ross here. So, you know, the white Swissies, they kick out the black foreigners, you know. And here it says SVP. I hope you can read it. The Schweizerische Volkspartei. The uh, the Swiss People's Party, you know. Something like the uh, NSDAP, the Swiss Workers' Party. So here it says, you know, the Swiss far-right SVP party. And they love to call themselves Eidgenosse, you know, and they're all the members, you know, and, and the ones they are making these posters for, you know, they, um, they love to call themselves Eidgenosse, the keepers of the oath. The Templar Oath. So and here it says, the new name, Kleid Genosse, which means the comrades, the comrades of the dress. And before it was the comrades of the oath. Now they are the comrades of the skirt. So Swissy won the ESC, the Eurovision Song Contest, all performing on a big Swiss cross which you can see here, and the ESC gets organized out of Swaziland. And by the way, the ESC, or European Eurovision Song Contest, has been entirely corrupted, where not the best musician wins based on musical qualities. No, it's a corrupt system where the onlookers may call a certain number for their favorite performer. And the one who gets most calls wins. It's like a conspiracy, where the best organized group wins. And so instead of Eurovision Song Contest, I call it now the Eurovision Song Conspiracy. Because that's what it is. You know, you see the Swiss cross. I mean, why Swiss cross? You should ask yourself, really. 
it says, the narrow vision song conspiracy. And, of course, the identitarian group behind a man in a woman's skirt will massively send out the most phone calls for the one advocating their specific lifestyle, which has nothing anymore whatsoever to do with music. And here you can see that it's as well, you know, they're celebrating their victory. It has nothing to do with music, you know. It's political. They're celebrating their victory by making by making T-shirts where it says Eurovision, Eurovision Song Contest. Like if you use something like humor or music, you know, certain things, you know, it, it's, uh, it gets sucked up by the people a lot easier, especially by the young ones. The Nazis did the same thing, you know. This is, this is what propaganda does, using cinema, using music, using humor, you know, then it's, you know, it's, it just gets sucked in much easier. You're laughing about something or you're enjoying the music and you think, oh, well, I, I'll accept the rest with it, you know. So here's the telephone cabin. It's also in these, you know, rainbow colors. So this just sending out a telephone call to the Eurovision uh, song uh, contest and the ones who get the most phone calls he wins i think they're using now emails as well uh, or computer uh, they even get some money for it uh, i think so here it says the swiss song conspiracy and remember the european Euro eurovision song contest it's out of switzerland by the um, european uh, music uh, union i think it was so and i explained this once to you why have they kidnapped the rainbow everywhere which is a natural sort of thing because it says so in the bible that and again i'm not religious i'm just quoting it says so in the bible that god promised not to flush down humanity again the ones who are disobedient to the uh, the laws of um, of the bible god's laws uh, with a um, uh, with with the water, you know, and the, um, so this is like God's promise not to do this uh, again. So they're just openly like uh, saying, uh, okay, you know, like children, like uh, 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 you see me, you know, I can do it because you promised, you know, us all, and you you'll never do this again, you know. So that's why they took up the uh, the rainbow color. The the rainbow as for this um, for this sort of behavior. The same corrupted, unmusical way in two thousand and fourteen. Another he, she, it, or whatever, with a beard in a woman's dress could win the Narrow Vision Song Conspiracy in 2014, about which I made a video, which of course got censored and taken off. So now I don't dare to say that much anymore, as I would like to, as the pink list killers have the thought police on their side looking over our shoulders so here you can see uh, this uh, he she it or whatever with a beard and a woman's dress and it says here most phone calls in 2014 Th this is how it works and here it says european song contest and the slogan of the thought police concerning this here is oni swaki malipals which is the slogan of the order of the garter and it means, it means shame on you who thinks bad of it. So the shame upon him who thinks bad of it, him or she or her, uh, you'll get the shame indirectly because they'll sentence you to a prison sentence and then you will be in a very shameful position and getting humiliated and being humiliated 
Well, that is shame. It's a shameful position where you're in at the, in that time. So this is how that works. So here it says, here you can read how it works, you know, voting for the Eurovision. So fans from all participating countries can vote over the phone. Now, I had nothing to do anyway with, you know, being a good musician. Uh, they can vote by text, you know, like an SMS like, or via the Eurovision app. You need to get an app. But people are unable to select their own, to select their own country's entry. The public votes make up 50% of the total vote, with the other half determined by a professional jury. Well, they are the same ones, eh? In each participating country. Remember, it gets all organized from out of Switzerland. And you know, it's by so here you can here you I, you know you need to take cookies. I don't want to take that cookies. I'm completely disgusted by it, you know, so I don't even want to read it all. You can read it here on Wikipedia. Um, it's all corrupted. It's it's a conspiracy. Here it says, um, where was it? Yeah. Uh, viewers can submit their vote by phone call, SMS, or via the official app. They can vote up to 20 times. You know? <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's it's politics, you know. It's it has nothing to do with a good musician. It's a conspiracy. It's all corrupted. It's really too bad because there are some really good musicians participating in the ESC who have absolutely no chance against this political conspiracy. In 2014, I saw some really good musicians from Eastern Europe, like the Shin and Mariko from Georgia, whom you can see here on YouTube, or Aram MP3 from Armenia, whom you can see here on YouTube. And in 2010, Alyosha from the Ukraine, all great musicians who were crushed by the conspiracy, which is in fact a conspiracy against music itself. And as you can see here, you can listen here on YouTube to these great Eastern European musicians who participated at the Eurovision Song Conspiracy and who had their hopes crushed by the Swiss conspiracy. Then, also in June 2024, there was the Ukraine Peace Summit in Faroe's neutral base in the Alps where the internal laws of Faroe's nobility guarantees safety for all pharaohs in their neutral base in the Alps. But mind you, for us normal slaves, it's not neutral at all. And they can do anything they want there with you, with no law protecting you. So it says pharaohs neutral base in the Alps. You can see how high it up is. You know, here's the building where it was kept, and here's down there, probably like two kilometers down there, or three. There is the rest. Or, and even this is quite high. You know, this is not like at zero meters above sea level. Also, this here must be like 700 meters above sea level. So. Here it says, the summit on peace in Ukraine, you see the Swiss flag, which is a, a, a perfect square, as in the square and compass. You know, it's not long like other flags, but officially it's like this, it's a square. And of course, this represents also Horus here. The same here, officially on the building at this glass here. This represents Horus, you know, this is the sun hieroglyph, 
with the sun in the middle and the two wings at each side. It also says 101, which we can see all over, mostly related to genocides on entire peoples. So here it says, Switzerland on June 15 to 16, 2024. Maybe it was exactly at the same time as the, uh, the Eurovision uh, conspir song conspiracy, which was also in June, and also organized from out of Switzerland, as I just showed you before. And look at the logo, about which I'll tell you more later on. Here again, it says here, Summit on Peace in Ukraine in Switzerland. June 2024. It's always in Switzerland. Because here, when there are warring fractions like Ukraine and Russia, the leaders, these pharaohs, you know, they can come here in peace and talk about it. You know, usually they do this in Geneva, but okay, Geneva gets a bit overcrowded with these sort of things. So they do it in a remote area, like at uh, 3,000 meters above sea level in the Alps. It was held at the Bergenstock Resort in Switzerland, owned by Katari Barva Real Estate Company, which is probably owned by some Katari prince or emir. And Qatar, just as Switzerland, sponsors Hamas and other terrorist groups big time of which I've already given you the proofs. So here you can see it. Here's their logo again. Now you can have a look at the picture. Okay. So here it says the June 2024 Ukraine Peace Summit. And it was held in the Bergenstock Resort. Here you can read it. Here you can see an image where it's like in the middle of the Alps, like, you know. And it reads, the Bergenstock Resort is a Qatari hotel and tourism complex situated above Lake Lucerne in Canton, Niedwalden. I think Niedwalden is one of the three cantons where Switzerland actually was uh, created in, uh, in the year 1291. So I'll show you now that it is the Barva here in the history. Yeah, here it says, um, here it says, the Barva real estate. Interesting logo as well. Um, they're in the Emir Emirate of Qatar. So here's another thing which is very interesting, how this uh, Burgenstock, how it started. Look, it started Franz Josef Bücher, there he is, and Josef Dürer, uh, a magnate, a politician. They were businessmen from Cairns, Canton, Obwalden. They had a sawmill and a factory making wood floorings in Kearns. To make their workforces in employment, the two men built the Hotel Sonnenberg in Engelberg. Well, you remember Engelberg, what happened there? You know, the angel of death. Well, in Engelberg, after the war, in the 60s, the angel of death of the uh, the concentration camp, I can't pronounce the name due to the censorship. Um, uh, Joseph, Joseph Mengele, he went skiing there in Engelberg with his son Rolf, who became a lawyer. You know, they're all in the same sort of business, you know. So this is very important to understand, you know, about the, uh, you always, must look, you know, what's going on before, what's going on afterwards. So here you can see a lot of pictures. Well, they probably get cut out out of the uh, the frame. So no, they'll get cut out. So you can look at it yourself. The logo of the Peace Summit 
on peace in Ukraine has a Freemason Vesica Piscas logo and it looks like the eyes of an owl, an animal equally appreciated by the Freemasons. So here you can see the Vesica Piscas, which means one for all, all for one, as it is part of a chain. And here's like, you know, the nose or something, it's different here. And the summit on peace in Ukraine. And here you see the two owls in a sort of a Freemason logo and being depicted very similar as this here, or actually, actually this, the same. And here you see also, so this means all for one, one for all. And here you see the faces, which means the same thing, one for all and all for one. Or like where we go one, we go all. And here you can see three swords for the concept of three, which is them. And here you see the, uh, the square and compass with the G, which is the seventh letter in the alphabet. Um, with an owl in it, you know, so now you know where the where the logo comes from, and it's always the same, you know. Can it be any more obvious that Switzerland is calling the shots concerning the Ukraine war? Everything gets decided in Switzerland. So here you can see Mr. Putin, and look what he's doing, you know, like holding his neck like this, you know, it's like, which is a Freemason help sign. Like if you're going to be appearing in front of a judge and you do this, it means, you know, I'm being hanged, please help me. You know, it's a call for all the Freemasons, who are all, you know, and the ones in key positions, please help me. Yeah, and he's doing it here. So this must be a real picture. And here you see the Swiss flag. I don't know. And here you see the sun, you know, the Amunera. And uh, here are the Swiss mountains. And here's a part here where the Burgenstock is, which belongs to Qatar. And talking about Qatar, Hamas terrorism, and Switzerland, the UNRWA is also based in Switzerland, and the Commissioner General is a Swiss by the name of Philippe Lazzarini. Look, here you can see him, a very charming guy, isn't he? Now he's financing terrorism. I mean, it's it's all been proven. I mean, the the. the the UNRWA financed the Hamas with one billion dollars, one billion, and out of Switzerland. So here it says he's the Swiss head boss of UNRWA, Philippe Lazzarini. And he, this is was this is from an interesting video. Here it says UNRWA kidnapped my son. Where is he? Or where is my son, Mr. Lazzarini? So he. On um, on Swiss Templars Day, when Switzerland was founded on August the first uh, this year in in two thousand and twenty four, so Switzerland was founded on August the first, twelve ninety one, in the Middle Ages. So here he's having a uh, conference, you know, and he's behaving differently here than you know than here. Uh, so, playing the game, you know, you see a big Swiss flag here, Swiss flag. This was on Templars Day, you see. There's an interesting video it was. I'll, I'll show it to you, like, in a minute where to find it. You should watch it. And this reminds me of uh, all the Swissies who aggressed me in Switzerland when I was uh, still in Switzerland with my family. Now they chased me away. I've been away for 10 years now. And this reminds me, especially when I was aggressed by a priest in the, uh, in the Teutonic uh, Knights Chapel 
of uh, Konitz, which is the same town where the dictator of uh, North Korea, Kim Jong, uh, was it Kim Jong Un, where he lived and where he went to school, and and I, he had exactly the same face, you know. I've I've in my whole life I've never seen so many aggressive people, and I've seen so many lies and so much terror and so much mean stuff, you know, as in and and terror as during my time in Switzerland. I mean, you can see here what I'm talking about. It I I could film the Teutonic priest, and it's somewhere in, in my one of my or several of my videos. You can you probably you you've seen that. So this is the head of UNRWA, very charming guy. So here you can see that video of the mother. She has on her T-shirt, uh, UNRWA kidnapped my son. Where is he, Mr. Lazzarini? And it's on the channel UN Watch. Very interesting channel. You should watch this. And the title is here. And uh, so this happened also this year. And it's all connected to Switzerland. The, uh, the UNRWA is in Switzerland. The UN is Swiss, in fact, which I show you in a minute. And Mr. Lazzarini is Swiss, and this happened on Templars Day in Switzerland on August the first. And um, I wonder what happened with her afterwards. Did they call the police? Probably, maybe not, because the Swissies are very sly. You know, they they know it's you know it's it's connected to the JJ base and to a horrible crime and they they want to keep a low profile you know for me they're always police coming for nothing you know and and aggressing me they even tried to shoot me uh, once in a forest etc etc and um you know well you saw his face before i right? mr lazzarini right? i'll show it to you right now again i compare it to when I was aggressed by the um, by the Teutonic Knights uh, priest, so here you can see Lazzarini, and here is the Teutonic Knights priest who aggressed me. You know, the face really reminds me. You know, it's the same sort of attitude. It's a Swiss aggression by priest of the Teutonic Knights Church of Konitz, which is the same town where Kim Jong Kim Jong Un where he was living and where he went to school. I also made a video about it, but I think they took it off. And you can find the whole video on uh, my old channel, Gyuri, which came back this year in uh, in April. And the title is uh, Teutonic Nights, and then in German, Deutsch Ritter On. So you can see a lot of more things, like a, a huge uh, black cross in front of the church. And I, and there were, and I entered the church, it was empty, there was nobody in it. And I've been filming there for 10 minutes, you know. And all of a sudden, they started aggressing me, you know, and pushing me, you know, this guy here, you see how aggressive he is. And I looked around, and then I saw there were a lot of people in the in the, in the church, you know. And, but when I entered, there was nobody there. I guess, you know, uh if they would have already been there unfortunately you know you can't see that in the footage but if they would have already been there they would never even have let me in there you know and there were there were even like tourist signs before you know here's the entrance like uh, welcome in the church and all that and and then and then you get aggressed by the swissies you know uh, Switzerland is not a peaceful country, you know, it's it's absolute nonsense, you know, they had the mercenaries all over the Middle Ages, you know, on the Templars' command, uh, murdering people all over Europe. Uh, here you can see how they really are, you know, and I have um, experienced Switzerland as, as very violent people, you know, over the time I was there, extremely violent, extremely mean and... and you know, this is my experience, you know, so if you want to censor my video, I'm just telling you that this is my experience, you know, and um, I can express my my experience here, you know, 
and uh, so look at the faces you know the predecessor of Unra's Lazzarini was also Swiss by the name of Pierre Krehenbühl, who is now the Director General of the ICRC or Red Cross. And like the UN, another Swiss organization involved in highly criminal activities and crimes against humanity. The Swiss UNRWA stands for United Nations Relief and Works Agency, and they financed the Hamas terror organization with an estimated $1 billion. Thus, the Swiss UN funding weapons, missiles, tunnels, and plane terror. So here it says, Philippe Lazzarini. And who is the commissioner? He, he is a Swiss humanitarian. Oh, yeah, humanitarian, okay. He is the commissioner general of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine refugees in the Near East. And here you can see it, you know, preceded by Pierre Crenbühl. Who is now, you can read it here, he's the Director General of the International Committee of the Red Cross, the ICRC. And, well, there's a lot more to see here. Uh, I'll let you watch that yourself. He's got four children in Switzerland. I wonder how they're being brought up, you know. So if I look here at the United Nations Relief and Works Agency, it says UNRWA, there it is. It says nothing about the um, commissioner, what was his name again? The um, commissioner general, uh, Philippe Lazzarini. You know, they're hiding it. It doesn't say anything, nothing. There's nothing, not even, uh, only here. Yes, here it says something on the sideline here. But in the text here, there's nothing. So they probably forgot to take it away here. You know, it's, it's already being censored. And here you can see this, Pierre Crenbühl, another Swiss. And he's the Director General of the International Committee of the Red Cross. And Pierre Crenbühl was born in Geneva, Switzerland. And, well, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There's a lot more to see here. Well, you watch it yourself. They're all Swiss, you know? And they are, they are, it's all based in Swiss. The directors are Swiss. And they're doing huge crimes abroad, you know, huge crimes. Well, that's nothing new to do for the Swiss, who also financed Adolf Hitler in 1923. So here you see the Villa Schoenberg. And here it says, August 30th, 1923, Adolf Hitler, he was in Villa, Schön, Villa Schönberg in Zurich. And you can see this in my, more about it in my video here, The Raven of Zurich, on the same channel. And remember how the Hamas terror organization, funded by the Swiss UNRWA, was in Swiss Parliament in 2012, which you can see here in this video. So here it says, this uh, in Bern, Switzerland, February 2012, in Swiss Parliament, there was Syed Abu, what's his name? Abu Musame, Mushir al Masri, and Kamis al Najjar, they were all in the Swiss Parliament together with the Swiss Senator. Gary Muller. 
So <clears throat> you can watch this on the same channel here, and that's the title of the video. So here you see the United Nations building in uh, New York with this uh, statue in front of it, you know, with a, with a gun with a knot in it. But that's all a lie. The reality is, you know, they have a Kalashnikov underneath, which is really working and shooting. And here it says UNRWA, and this is United Nations organization. And which, which is the reality. So here it says the League of Nations 1920 Geneva in Switzerland. And here you see the uh, director of the UNRWA, the Swiss Lazzarini. So the Geneva UN office officially is the second office after the head office in New York. But that's only on paper as the United Nations come out of the League of Nations founded in Geneva, Switzerland in 1920 that went over into the UN in 1945 while still holding the same Geneva address in a building called the Palace of Nations, like in a world government and a world ruler living in a palace, like a king over all nations, the Palace of Nations. And look at it, how big it is, it's incredible. It says, Palace of Nations in the number one principality, that's Geneva in Switzerland. It says the world government. Here you see the United Nations with a weapon. It's a weapon against humanity. Look at this, how big it is, you know, the Palace of Nations. It says, much bigger than the UN in New York. So, which one is the head office, eh? And this is the same building where the League of Nations started in 1920. So on paper, UN the, in New York is their main head office. But in, in reality, this one here in Geneva is, is the one calling all the shots. You know? So basically, the UN started in Geneva, Switzerland in 1920 as a product of World War I, which ended in 1918, when empires of the vertical rule of the old world order were smashed down and became horizontal rule, new world order republics, making the UN a 100% republican institution based in the Templars' very first principality, Switzerland, where all the principalities' global control structures are. So the terror-funding UNRWA are very, very Swiss, from beginning to end. Here you see the beginning, black and white pictures with the, uh, the League of Nations. And the end now is with uh, Lazzarini, the, uh, the director of UNRWA in Switzerland, a Swiss. So as you could see, I could only find black and white pictures, you know, of the, uh, the Palace of Nations because it's highly secured. It's, it's really hard to find any colored pictures, only the old black and white ones, you know, because they're hiding things there, you know, as it is the real base behind the United Nations. There, you, you can't find any new colored pictures or, or good colored pictures what I needed, you know. They, they well, anyway, the, the laws of silence around Switzerland. Right? So here you can see an old picture from 1920 probably when they started this, and it still had the, uh, the pillars, Yashin and Boaz here. Look at this. Yeah, it says, like Solomon's temple, Yashin and Boaz. 
And they took him away now because it's a bit too obvious. So if this is the world government and in Solomon's temple, there were the two pillars, Yashin and Boaz. So this is pretty much a reference to Solomon's temple. That is King Solomon who was the, who was the son of King David and he was married with the daughter of Pharaoh, what it says literally in the Bible. So the first temple was King Solomon's temple. And it got destroyed, I think, by the Persians. And then the second temple got destroyed by the Romans, the last temple. So if this is supposed to be the world government, and it says the palace of nations, and it shows the two pillars of Solomon's temple, could this be the third temple about all the religious people are talking about? And what says so in the Bible? Is this the third temple? Well, it has all the ingredients, hasn't it now? The two pillars, they're probably hidden somewhere inside. They're still there, probably. And it's the world government, or at least they try to be the world government and the highly corrupted and criminal, you know, financing terrorists, you know, to put entire nations on their knees and entire peoples on their knees using criminals and terrorists you know to do the job for them you know to create the world government and we see it coming we see it happening and developing today you know so i mean this looks like the temple of solomon with the two pillars my guess is this is the third temple this is the world government i mean we are there so here's the website on the Palace of Nations. I'll read it for you. The Palace of Nations, in French, Palais des Nations, is the home of the United Nations. Here's the same picture, sort of, as before. Located in Geneva, Switzerland. It was built between 1929 and 1938 to serve as the headquarters of the League of Nations. This is the predecessor of the United Nations. Look, they've got a pentagram. In their logo, you see, and it has served as uh, as the home of the United Nations office at Geneva since 1946, when the Secretary General of the United Nations signed the headquarters agreement with the Swiss authorities. You see, it's the headquarters. Here it says it's the headquarters agreements with the Swiss authorities. Although Switzerland did not become a member of the United Nations until 2002. <laughs> they, didn't, they were not even a member, you know. You know, they let the whole world fight and you know, these are the laws of silence. You know, you don't talk about Switzerland. They don't even become a member. So here in the, um, the Palace of Nations, it belonged to the League of Nations. And which was, um, here you can see it, it was founded in 1920. Here it is, 1920. And um, then when um, it got dissolved in 1945, it became the United Nations. And uh, since 1946, they, uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations well, they are here in the uh, the Palace of Nations, you know, with the two, well, they took them away. Probably when it became the United Nations, they took them away because they're hiding things, you know. So, uh, here it says, it was founded in 1920 by the Paris Peace Conference that ended the First World War. So, it is, it is all about you know, replacing the old world order, vertical rule, and have the uh, the new Republican, new world order, horizontal rule, you know. And uh, it says the main organization of the uh, the League of Nations, it ceased operations in 1946. Um, when many of its components, well, all of them, were locate, relocated into the new United Nations as the template of the modern global governance. The League profoundly shaped the modern world. You see, it's global governance. Uh, well, there you go. What else to say? 
So the um, the League of Nations and their Palace of Nations, you know, in the uh, the first and most important uh, principality in the world. This is probably the new the new um, the third temple, you know, to rule the world. And I I've even heard, you know, there are things about it that Calvin, you know, the the Protestant guy who lived in uh, Geneva, he wanted to make Geneva the new Jerusalem. Well, a lot of things, right? the Palace of Nations. I mean, it's always in Switzerland. Their finance, they talk, they say we want to create peace and all that. And um, they're just financing terrorists and all this. Yeah, Location, Geneva, Switzerland, as always. Then in July, August of 2024, there were the Olympic Games in Paris which got also organized from out of Switzerland, as everything does, with the IOC, or International Olympic Committee, being in Lausanne, Switzerland. And they organize everything from out of Switzerland. So here it says, the IOC, the International Olympic Committee in Lausanne, Switzerland. Here's the building. And here you see the Swiss flag in front of the Eiffel Tower with the uh, Olympic uh, Vesica Piscas, which is, which is a chain. You know, they're all connected, as you see. So it means one for all and, and all for one. And here you see a aerial view of the uh, of the IOC building in Switzerland so you'll see this the funny shape of it you know and here is a circle of, which is of course the compass and I've explained to you the compass is the concept of three the circle and there are four sort of a star and it has four points, four-pointed star, <laughs> which is, of course, the concept of four, which stands for the square. So from above, you know, where the uh, probably the demons fly or something, or Horus, you know, the sky god, from above, you can see it says the three and four Masonic concepts, the concept of three and four. So this is in Switzerland, and the whole thing got organized from out of Switzerland, as always. Everything does. So here you can read it in the website. It says here, International Olympic Committee for IOC. Here's the building, but of course in the website, they're not going to show you the, uh, the aerial view of the building. So here, here it says, the IOC... It is based in Lausanne, Switzerland. You know, that's Lausanne. And the IOC is the authority responsible for organizing the Summer, Winter and Youth Olympics. That's what I told you. It's organized out of Switzerland. The IOC is the authority, it says, responsible for organizing the Olympic Games. So the IOC also is the governing body of the National Olympic Committees and of the worldwide Olympic movement. They're the boss, you know, of everything. The IOC's term for all entities and individuals involved in the Olympic Games. You know, so it says the IOC is the governing body uh, of all entities and individuals involved in the Olympic Games. They decide everything. It was not decided in Paris. No way. You know, as always, it's, it's out of the first principality, you know. The most important principality. I mean, they, they call all the shots, you know. It says one more. The headquarters, it's called the Olympic House in Lausanne. Switzerland. 
Uh, well, there's not more to see, but um, oh, there's even an IOC member oath. <laughs> All IOC members must swear the following. Honor to be chosen as a member of the International Olympic Committee. It looks like a Freemason Lord, you know. I fully accept all the responsibilities that this office brings. I promise to serve the Olympic movement to the best of my ability. I will respect the Olympic Charter. Wow, they even have a charter. Oh, yeah, that's uh, no religion and no racism allowed and all these things. Well, they did it anyway. And accept the decisions of the IOC. So, you know, you have to accept all the decisions of the IOC, which is in Lausanne, Switzerland. I will always act independently of commercial. So it says, you know, accept all the decisions. So even if Paris, they wanted to do something else, you know, they have to accept the decisions of the IOC. They call all the shots. I will always act independently of commercial political interest. Well, it didn't. As well as any racial religious consideration, I will fully comply with the IOC code of ethics. Well, they didn't either. I promise to fight against all forms of discrimination, well, they didn't, and dedicate myself in all circumstances to promote the interests of the International Olympic Committee. Well, that's what they did, the last one. And you saw the roof, it says square and compass. You know, those are the interests of the International Olympic Committee and Olympic movement. Well, that's final, you know. The rest you can read it yourself. You know, it, it says it all here. So, also, this here from the 2024 opening ceremony got organized from out of Switzerland, which has upset a lot of religious people due to the overall censorship. I cannot pronounce the words and what it represents. The sun behind its head, or whatever it is, represents Horus, the light bearer and the sky god often represented by the son Behutet. So it says, Horus, the sky god, symbolized by the sun. Here you see that, the sun here. It's uh, traditionally, Horus is often represented by the sun. And here it says, organized by the Swiss beast principality. You know, everything does, everything is go, is being organized from out of Switzerland. And you know, if they are showing here Horus, you know, in this here, and we saw the square and compass on the building, you know, it fits together, doesn't it now? You know? And they broke all the rules of their, their own rules of commitment and, and IOC Olympic game rules, you know, not to do any religious or nationalistic or, or racial stuff, you know, and they did it. It's, you know, all over, you know, it's, it's, they're so, they're lying to themselves, if you, if you like, you know. Well, here's a website on Horus, and there's a couple of specific things well he's the falcon god you know that and he has the all-seeing eye because he lost uh one of his eyes and um, it says the sky god since horus was said to be the sky he was considered to also contain the sun and the moon egyptian believed that the sun was his right eye and the moon his left and that they traversed the sky when he, a falcon, flew across it. Well, and he lost one of his eyes, which was probably the left one with the moon. And um, so the, the one with the sun was uh, left. And here it also says the golden Horus, about which I tell you a bit more, you know, considering the... Um, the closing ceremony of the Olympic Games, you know, the golden boy we just saw there. And, uh, but I'll show it to you later. So here, Eru Bedeti, Horus of Behudet. So the winged son of Horus of Edfu is a symbol associated with divinity, royalty, and power in ancient Egypt. You know, the, um, 
all the cartouches of all the pharaohs, they had the horrors in it, you know, because it's, um, uh, here's the uh, div divinity, you know. And the winged sun, you know, the, the, the Horus sun disk, the winged sun is symbolic also of the eternal soul. When placed above the temple doors, it served as a reminder to the people of their eternal nature. The winged sun was depicted on top of pylons in the ancient temples throughout Egypt. Um, Hermaket represented the dawn and the early morning sun. Hermaket, it means Horus in the horizon. So the morning sun, you know, that's... Uh, Horus. And of course, there's a lot more. Here's the rising sun. So here in this video here, I've shown you more about the Behudet winged sun disk of Horus. So here's the sun and here are the wings. This is 101. Here's the O. And these blokes here, they use the same thing. Here's the sun and here are the wings. And mind you that the Nazis, they were very much um, there were many pink list killers in the top nazis just as the pink list killers uh, you saw at the uh, uh, olympic uh, opening ceremony you know it's all related with nazism with egypt and it's always the same thing and their base is switzerland so you can see this in this video here and make sure you also watch part one and part two. I made this uh, like a year ago, last year in 2023. So, so during the opening ceremony, um, the sun be uh, above its head. It's basically this here and also this because it's all related. And I've proven that to you in my other videos. Eh? And also the pale horse has upset a lot of religious people all over the world as they saw the biblical end times pale horse in it. Now watch my video series, The Swiss Beast, Home of the Devil, for further basic information about these sort of things. So here you see the Eiffel Tower, Paris, this is what they showed, and this is what they showed as well here with the Olympic Committee stuff, you know, and remember the square and compass on the roof, right? So here it says, the Swiss beast, home of the devil, organized in Lausanne of the Swiss principality. Then in August 2024, there was the Olympic Games closing ceremony with golden boy here representing of course the pharaonic god horus also called horus of gold as you could read in the website and i'll show it once more and also in my video room 101 part 3 it says in the ancient egyptian text behutet horus of gold so here you see the sting from the Olympic Games here as well. And these are original gold statues uh, representing Horus, the Horus of gold and the winged sun disk. This is why golden boy of the Olympic Games is flying because Horus of gold is the falcon god. He is Behutet, the Horus winged sun disk and the sun is of course gold and the ones in the principality of Switzerland, where the palace of nations its supreme prince of the palace and the olympic committee are who made the whole pharaonic horror show they know exactly what it's all about but through the swiss laws of silence of their neutral base, they will never tell the dumb slaves what it's all about. So it says the flying falcon, Horus of gold. That's why they got, we have this airplane. They also call it the flying falcon, some US airplane, I think it is. You know, and you see it hanging here. 
on a thread here and here as well because it needs to be flying like golden the horrors of gold here you know that's what it's all about and they never told you this in ancient egypt gold was related to eternity therefore horus stands in the cartouche of each pharaoh which i'll have you read in the next website called ancient egyptian royal titulary each pharaoh was called a living horus so here in this picture you see both you know the wings of horus and this here of pharaoh so each pharaoh was uh, represented um, by horus here's a i suppose this is, must be the falcon here you can see the pyramid and a lot of gold you know therefore in the 33rd olympics of 2024 organized out of lausanne switzerland where the ioc is located the message was given that ancient egypt will rise again and that pharaoh and his swiss base in the alps are eternal so here you see this thing from the closing ceremony horrors of gold it says egypt is eternal and will rise again that was the message both of the opening ceremony with the sun behind the head and of the closing ceremony it's it's written all over it so here is that website ancient egyptian royal titulary and it uh, says like here the horus name the horus name is the oldest form of the pharaoh's name originating in prehistoric egypt many of the oldest known egyptian pharaohs were known only by this title the title horus yeah the horus name was usually written in serek a representation of a palace facade the name of the pharaoh was written in hieroglyphs inside the represent uh, typically an image of the falcon god horus was perched on top of it or beside it as you can see here this is the cartouche with horus on top of it and thereafter the image of horus always appeared alongside the name of the pharaoh so in every cartouche as you can see here the uh, horus picture is uh, part of it and here it says the horus of gold and gold yeah, also known as the golden horus name this form of pharaoh's name typically featured the image of a horus falcon perched above or beside the hieroglyph for gold and gold was strongly associated in the ancient egyptian mind with eternity so this may have been intended to convey the pharaoh's eternal horus name and this is exactly this what we saw in the closing and and the opening ceremony of uh, the olympic games you know we saw gold horrors of gold and we saw that uh, the sun behind uh, the head of one of these uh, whatever you know. so here's that website it was all pharaonic symbology in the uh, in the opening and closing ceremony of the Olympic Games from Switzerland and all organized in Lausanne, Switzerland, where the base of Pharaoh is. Of course, the logo of the Swiss IOC for International Olympic Committee is the Vesica Piscis meaning one for all, all for one, as the rings are connected in a chain. The same horizontal Templar proverb stands on the ceiling of the Swiss Parliament in Latin, unus pro omnibus omnes pro uno. 
for one for all and all for one. Just as Donnie's where we go one, we go all. So here you see the Eiffel Tower, Swiss flag, you know, because the Olympic Committee is in Switzerland. Here are the five rings, you know, which is the, here it says, Vesi Capiscus. It means there it's a chain, like a chain of command, you know, they're all together. They're all in it. Here it says this here of Donny, and here this says on the Swiss ceiling, and also army badges, as I've already shown you, Unus pro omnibus, omnes pro uno. It means one for all and all for one, which is a Templar saying. And all of this, 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 and this, it's all related to the Republic horizontal rule of the NWO. Also in this year of 2024, it has been internationally published that the suicide rate in Swiss prisons is alarmingly high and four times as high compared to other Western European countries. And here it says room 101, and this is in this video here, you can find some more how people are being murdered in Swiss prisons and how they do it. Here's the title of this video, and it's on the same channel. And I made it like eight months ago. So here you can read about it. High suicide rate reported in Swiss prisons in June 2024. Here, Switzerland's low incarceration rate comes with Europe's probably higher suicide rate in the Swiss prisons. And um, yeah, Switzerland's prison suicide rate high. Switzerland's su prison suicide rate was alarmingly high in 2022. And um, here, yeah, look at this here. Yeah. And this, the friendly Swiss, they even help you. You know, here it says. The first assisted suicide by Swiss prison inmate. A Swiss prison inmate has reportedly ended his life with the help of the assisted suicide organization Exit. The first time this has happened in Switzerland. You know, they're even so nice to help you, you know, if you, if you want to exit, it says here. You know. So that saves them a lot of problems, you know, and even earn a couple of bucks with it yeah so very friendly country and i've been talking about this for years as you know i made many videos about it but nothing ever will happen you know every year they talk about it and nothing will ever change you know Well, I already told you that Swiss prisons are full with political prisoners from foreign countries who are being suicided and tortured through code O2T oxygen deprivation. So here you can see how people are getting tortured in Swiss prisons. And here is about the oxygen uh, deprivation. If you want to read it, you can read it here. It's O2T uh, oxygen deprivation. Here's one more. Yeah, why torture and torture prison burn in Switzerland, O2T. And it's on this video here from three years ago. It's on the same channel. And here's the title. I made many videos about it. Anyway, Swissy would never put a dangerous Swiss banker or some Swiss UNRWA terrorist funding Swiss Commissioner General in prison, would they now? But instead of that, they put many political prisoners in the Swiss prisons who get suicided and get rid of at a very high rate, which you could just read in the newspapers of 2024.
the Swiss prisons are murder factories to eliminate political prisoners like Sean Ross, Wolfgang Umfogel, and many others whose names we will never hear. It's a Swiss murder factory. Swiziland is the place of the evil magicians. Like a magician drawing the attention to one hand, the so called neutral hand, while distracting the attention from the hidden hand that does the magical invisible trick, like making a white rabbit disappear, or in this case, make people billions of dollars and entire nations disappear while the audience is looking at the other hand the so-called neutral hand while the other hand the so-called hidden hand literally strangles the white rabbit these are the true Alpine masters of the dark arts in the world's first principality. And I know what it feels like to be a strangled white rabbit being in their hands, while the whole world is looking at the other hand of these evil magicians and thinking that Swaziland is so clean, neutral, and innocent. So I hope that the true knowledge behind all these terrifying events of 2024, with the Swissies having their hidden hand in each of them, contributes to the genuine understanding of what is really going on. And you'll hopefully remember my words and this intel when within the English language you hear someone say, on the other hand, on the other hand, on the other hand.